so uh, first of all hey everyone this is harsh and uh, welcome to the introduction session of develop labs so what exactly is develop labs well uh, we are the student led open source community of iit jodhpur and that's what we aim we uh, we help you we we help to form an open source community through proper guidance and self learning and have different uh, different types of projects and sessions and workshops uh, yeah so that's what we are that is what develop lab is what exactly is open source so open source is publicly available code that is uh, community driven so uh, basically organizations such as ourselves uh, have software that is open to everyone everyone can see the code everyone can reuse the code modify it or improve it and uh, yeah there is common gains for everyone so you might have heard of companies like uh, red hat or something that are worth billions of dollars or linux or for example say vlc so all these are examples of open source software so the source code uh, source code of of all these softwares is open to everyone so that exactly is what open source software is yeah and we are at develop labs are big advocate of it like if any projects we are willing to make we will probably have it open source so like if any of the projects you like you can check it out on github by yourself yeah big exactly. that so what is development coding so development coding uh, is a coding where we aim to solve real problems where we uh, make products where we make softwares that that are designed to solve real problems it is project uh, it is product oriented what i mean by product oriented is uh, say for example we have uh, chrome or chromium uh, to go into the depth or we have say android or linux in itself so we are aiming to have a product at the end of it so that is what a develop coding and there are different kinds of development coding so for example you have android you have uh, uh, webd you have vero vero os that sort of thing so television or say smart watches or all that sort of so there is a different there are many kinds of development coding that that exist and it is value oriented so we aim to generate some value value in in uh, for customers for our clients so it may may not be monetary as such for example linux but it can be monetary for example uh, red hat again so that is what is development coding and yeah so i i hope everything is clear with you guys till now if you have any questions you can obviously unmute yourself and ask or you can perhaps put them in the chat let's move to a different uh not exactly different let's move to what gsoc is i not sure if uh, many of you won't be familiar with what gsoc is the so gsoc is google summer of code uh so what exactly happens is uh, companies such as google uh have a lot to gain from open source software so for example the whole chromium project was built on open source people such as uh, you and i helped in contributing making the chrome project so since they have so much to gain from open source it is in their interest to publicize to uh, it is a way of it is their way to give back to the community so what they are doing is they have in summers uh, they ask organizations to uh, float projects that students such as ourselves can work on and in return google pays us some some amount of money and there is perks to it and all that sort of thing but essentially what google does is is promote open source software development and that is what google summer of code is so we'll come back to this perhaps uh, dhruv we can explain a bit more on this yeah sure so let's think it in this way there's a open source project right uh, you got a gist of what a open source project is it is basically a project in which the code itself is open for the public to view use reuse or modify according to their will now if you do that you might think that they might not gain anything from it or like uh, how do we maintain it like from where would be the financial help coming from to maintain this kind of projects so here's where uh, 
projects or initiatives like this help to survive this kind of project so for example gsoc or outreach or let's say community bridge interns these are the sort of interns which are uh, promoted and sponsored by big companies like google or linux uh, uh, foundation let's say to help maintain those open source projects so that they are up to date and the necessary improvements that are need to be made are made over there and to be applicable for this you generally need to be in the environment of uh, uh, on how open source software work or how the how do you approach a development coding and basically that's what we try to incorporate in develop labs that you get a gist of how you work if you are coding in a way that you are developing uh, something instead of let's say just uh, doing a computer programming sort of thing right so to do that we have a prog uh, a program of our own called winter of code which we usually do uh, it usually starts at the time of january at least this time it will start at the time of january and yeah it is basically a sort of replica of how gsoc works so it will help you get familiarized with what kind of steps are there how do you approach your stuff how do you choose a project how do you how do you propose your own project and stuff like that so okay. let's i guess you can probably talk about it uh, later as the slide comes yeah so there is a very interesting question that has been asked in the chat uh, some someone from someone named vishal asked is it not possible that someone copies a project if it if its code is open source so that exactly is what uh, i think we discussed so for example let's take chromium so chrome is built upon chromium edge is also the new microsoft edge is also built upon chromium so yes the code is reused the co the code is modified with a license of course there are some copyright and everything all that sort of things are present but look at it from a community perspective the community has a lot to gain so if there wasn't chromium probably there wouldn't have been a chrome or a microsoft edge so yeah people can and do uh, copy uh, copy codes but like that's what it is meant for yeah and to add to harsh's point the value isn't over there the code which they have made public the value which you gain over there is the community which they have built on like if you go to the chromium repo right now it has gained a such a valuable community that whenever there is a sort of bug which you find in chrome or something else which you find in chrome or chromium to be specific there is there are a lot of people to tell us that this particular issue is there and there are a lot of people to help you in navigating how to solve that issue so as a community you would be improving that code itself in, in, instead of just making it hidden inside a private wall and no one be able to see it and no one be able to point out the issues and stuff like that so that's and what's its main game over there there is another question that is there so how do open source companies like red hat earn so much money so one way so it's there are, there are uh, several components on how to monetize a project but like for example the whole android was uh, built on top of open source uh, software so how android is monetizing is through say for example play store or through advertisement uh, like essentially play store so they charge apps for some money to publish those apps so there are ways to monetize uh it just have to think about it for red hat yeah. I'll, i'll actually add for red hat so red hat uh, at its core is basically the linux os on top of that they built some tools so the whole code base is open source but what they charge for is their uh, support service so that's a, that's a very beautiful thing they don't charge for the product but when corporates actually use that they need support services for it and you can understand it's a billion dollar market just for the support services yeah so uh um, i i guess to add to that i will also say there are some kind of projects which also are not generally made for making any profit they are generally made so that the companies who are building in that domain can have a common playground to use that particular thing and develop them all together so their resources don't go to waste so or there are also some open source projects like that yeah Correct. people also donate to open source projects so for example this google is giving so much back to the open source community through this google summer of code thing so they pay 
the students that are actually working in the open source. So again, there are companies that use open source and then they give back to the open source community simply because they are using that. So yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So I guess we can uh, move on. So that's what GSOC is essentially, Google's way of giving back to the community. But where do we come into the picture? So uh, we have something called a winter of code. So we have a month long process of open source software development and you can work with experienced mentors uh, that will be our seniors and uh, alumni as well. So you can work with those people uh, and develop open source software. You will be given month or more than a month to develop those things. And that can help you actually, that can actually help you to prepare for your GSOC and in general gain some skills. Uh, so that's what the winter of code is. So as given by the name, it is conducted in uh, winter. This time the schedule is a bit off. So something like this is what we are planning. Uh, you can have that after the trimester that we are having in February. So that's what the winter of code is. So basically we'll be uh, replicating the entire process of uh, GSOC, but on a smaller scale and between our community only. So in GSOC, you can contact to any organization and work with any mentor you want. In Winter of Code, we actually have a list of mentors that will float and you can work with them if you're good enough. So let's move on to another thing that we at Develop Labs do, and that is we conduct workshops. Uh, workshops are hands-on learning experiences where you can uh, code with the person that is actually helping that is actually conducting the workshop so we are we have conducted several workshops before and we have some plans to conduct uh, these workshops this year as well so we have blockchain that is planned this year serverless computing and docker and kubernetes all that sort of thing that is planned for this year so you may not be eligible to attend all of these workshops but again we have most of the activities for you so this is the uh, timeline that we have for workshops this year we have a GitHub workshop December, December end and then back end and we have continuous integration and uh, test driven development. And then we can basically have feedback from you and all that sort of things that you want. Yeah, the winter of code is primarily for uh, sophomores, but the good ones among you can also pitch the project if you have good enough skills. Yeah, so we have Another thing that we at Develop Labs do is have seminars. Seminars is uh, to provide you an opportunity to explore a topic in depth. So we have currently thought of having approximately two seminars per month. And seminars can help you webinars in this trimester. So webinars can help you develop a wide range of communication and study skills. So we have something planned for this year, for example, functional programming or the revolution of JavaScript or agile and scrum developments. DevOps, etc. So uh, again, we have some timeline of seminars that we're going to conduct uh, this time. Yeah. Uh, before we move on to the next slide, let's ask if anyone has any doubts. Yeah, so if you have any doubts, you can perhaps put it into chats. So uh, you guys are asking about what are the skills that are required for winter of code. So, uh, Essentially, you should be able to develop some sort of an open source software. We'll be floating a list of projects and a basic plan uh, that you can read and get an idea of what exactly is required by uh, Winter of Code. Yeah, so what is there for beginners and interested in open source and develop apps? So we'll come to that. We have a lot of projects and that you can that you guys can take. And yeah, you can learn a lot from them. Yeah, and Nitish, this and, uh, Develop Lab is not a club per se. It's just a community of people who work on projects which they like, right? So, and not just projects. We have also have uh, web webinars and workshops and all that sort of thing. Exactly. We try to learn stuff and we try to share what we learn, basically. Exactly. And pre, there are no such prerequisites. It's all about how much are you active in the community itself and how much you contribute on the pr projects and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think we can I, move on 
to the next part now so yeah yeah this is now comes the interesting bit <laughs> so this is what you all have been uh, waiting for and yeah let's move on to something uh, more exciting than this so let's move on to the project showcase so suham can you take over from here yeah sure um, can you stop sharing uh, yeah yeah just a second me. I hope this stopped, right? Yeah. So, uh, is my screen visible? Nope. Uh, is it? Is it now? Yes. It is yeah. right. So, guys, as uh, Harsh told you about uh, what we are and what we do, it's time to look at some projects that uh, we have developed in these two three years. Uh, we have had uh, projects in web development and android development majorly i'll uh, try to showcase some of them with you uh, you can uh, also check uh, all of these projects at this website which we'll share later so one of the projects is the student jumkana website which was developed first by uh, our founding members uh, ajay prabha i don't know if he's here or not but uh, this is what made me join develop labs when i was in my uh, first year so this is one website which uh, showcases all these societies which are now boards uh, a panel where you can share your skills and uh, search anyone who has a certain a specific skill for example if i type cp it will give me the results of people who have the similar skill then uh, there are projects uh, on android development for example there is one uh, collaborative uh, development which has been going on since of in since the past month where we are uh, making an android app uh, for a platform called as stop stop which is basically uh, a tool for uh, your you know tool for uh, your competitive programming progress tracking which tracks your competitive programming pro- pro- process and it helps you uh, keep track of your friends also uh, also this whole websites that you have you are looking at right now is also made by uh, develop lab members then we also have a fair share of uh, chrome extensions also if uh, you guys are using it or not i don't know if it's uh, for the first year rights or not but this is one chrome extension that we have built which lets you join your daily classes without even uh, pressing a single button it just automatically opens the meet link or whatever it is and you just join with your video and audio feed off and there are several more projects uh, for example the hc portal which which is developed by harsh am for the health center at iit jodhpur where you can make appointments etc so these are the uh, kind of the best projects that we have there was one more project that i would like to showcase which is mugno where you can share your notes uh, and also take a look at what other people have shared for respective years so this is basically an archive like if i go there are notes for sem 4 sem 3 etc i guess that's it uh just to add so i'm with your presentation over here like uh, so home if you can share your screen i guess the most exciting thing for you guys to see would be the github link which is also shared with each of the website like you can click on that and see the source code for each of the projects uh which you like yeah. right? and like yeah. you can run it on your own local pc because you have maintained a pretty good readme for each of the f- files which would guide you through the steps which you need to take to run it locally on your machine so like mm-hmm. that might be something interesting which you would like for example so if you can also show the souvenirs website yeah sure i'll uh, show the souvenirs website so this is one website that we uh, developed this year in april which basically showcases uh, all of the events that has happened uh, till now like till 2020 for example if you guys know something about ignis uh, here are all of the drives where the photos are stored so if you want to go and check uh, suppose paper dance photos so uh, you can go and uh, you know basically check all of the videos and photos 
online. This is one thing that we created last month, uh, this year. So uh, before we move any further, I actually uh, yeah have this to share. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Can someone confirm? It is. Okay, so uh, this is the YouTube channel of uh, Develop Labs. So we have actually uh, compiled all the sessions, some of the sessions uh, that we have taken in the last year or so, and we have put them on YouTube. We'll put this introductory session on YouTube as well. So you can check out all the sessions that we have on uh, YouTube and you can perhaps learn from them and we'll be uploading more such sessions on YouTube uh, from now on too. So coming back uh, to the slides. So yeah, so this is a small part of the team of people that we have working at uh, Develop Labs and perhaps you shall be one of them too. Uh, so yeah, you can contact us you can see our website, you can contact us on our email. And perhaps most of you are on the uh, Slack channel. And while we are talking about the Slack work, uh, workspace, uh, some of you actually pointed out that you are more active on Discord because all the communities are uh, on Discord already. So we are planning to shift to Discord as well, gradually. We'll keep both of them active. So yeah, that's all from uh, my side. Perhaps uh, Anshul, you would like to add something. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, apart from not much to add apart from this, like uh, for anything, the teams and stuff, you can check out our website, which they were sharing earlier. We have all the team project info and like some of uh, some of you guys said, how do we start or some basic stuff you could start off with. Let, let's say if you know programming and want to contribute right away, you could go to our repositories and make like solve issues for us or contact the people who are working on those projects. So you can like when you join Slack, you can ask people who are working on a project and get assigned some specific issues to work on them. Uh, yeah, not much to add apart from that. If you have any questions, we can answer that. Yeah, you can all, uh, as Anshu pointed out, you can see you can check out the GitHub the, uh, repositories of all our projects, and you can perhaps choose which one you want to work on or if you are curious. First, about them. first, there was a question asked. Uh, right now, how to join the developers? Would you like to take that one? Yeah, so uh, develop like you can if you have if you're present in the uh, Slack channel of Develop Labs, you are already if already joined Develop Labs. Uh, what you should have been asking is how can I start working on a project? So essentially, you can uh, check out the GitHub repos and see if something interests you, or you have some interesting project that you can pitch on ideas. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. You you're all in Develop Labs. Welcome to Develop Labs. Yeah. You can check out GitHub or you can uh, yeah, how to join this Slack channel. It was in the mail that you guys received. Okay, so Harsh, I guess we can share the Discord link as well here if it's yeah, ready. just a minute. So Shubham is asking what should we learn now to work on projects and what do we have to learn? Uh, does anyone want to take this one? Anshul, do you want to take this one? Yeah, so my uh, initial suggestion would be most of you would probably be having a basic programming course in college. So if you don't have any prior programming knowledge, like that's a very basic prerequisite to start off with anything to have at least uh, understand how programming in general works or uh, otherwise if you have some background already and you want to start off uh, working with us just join the community and you can ping people and start uh, like working on projects directly you can learn on the way it's not like you need to know everything before you head in but at least we expect some level of programming understanding before you work on anything and someone asked what is GitHub, like uh, explaining GitHub. We will have a separate session on Git. Everything would be covered there. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, you can uh, check out the uh, 
develop labs website as well as the develop lab github and see if something interesting here to contribute to any repo should we contact anyone or just yeah you can uh, comment on the issues that are there you can raise the issue on your own or you can put that on slack channel this well. there are uh, explore the discord and slack channels there are channels for individual projects and you can ping in uh, those channels yeah that's it Shubham, we'll have a separate session on how to prepare for GSOC and what uh, should you keep in mind while preparing for GSOC. I think uh, we can perhaps end this if there is nothing more. Yeah, guys, if there are more personal questions, you can always ping us on Discord or Slack. Yeah. Yeah, this was just an introductory session. Apart from this, we'll start off with our proper sessions in a week or so so stay tuned for those yeah okay so you can find the discord link in the chat above and i'll be putting the discord link on slack channel as well the journal channel as well okay guys so you can uh, leave thank you for joining us and i hope uh, you guys will be participating in events that we have okay